Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is how to light interiors or how to light the inside of a building, a cave, whatever it is, or it doesn't even need to be the interior but where it is dark we're going to be lighting it. So now this might be quite a simple and basic video for a lot of you out there but also for a lot of people it's not, it's something they don't know how to do, especially for beginners, it's something which obviously everyone needs to learn everything. So that's why I'm going over today, so you see we've got this very basic building here which is pitch black inside, you can't see anything, so we're going to be going over lighting this up to make it look really good for our games. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the inside of our building. Now if you're still building this, you're still creating this without having any lighting on, what you can do is go up to the top left, select lit and go to unlit, or obviously press alt 3, and you can obviously see we have this building here, we can now see it perfectly. It's a very, very basic building which I've got here. What I'm going to do is go back to lit mode and we're going to add in some lights. So now in Unreal Engine 5, what we're going to do is go up to this add actors up here in the top left, so quickly add to the project, press that, and then we have a choice of these lights here. You're not going to want directional light and you're not going to want skylight. The ones we're going to be using are point light, spotlight, and rec light. And I'll show you what these are now. So we have a point light here, which simply just gives off a bit of light in a circle around this area so if we were to lower the radius you should be able to see it there so you can see what it's actually doing within this radius and if we were to then get in a spotlight you'll notice it's as it sounds it is a spotlight like so which can also give some good effects like this or another one is a rect light which I think is more realistic for a lot of buildings is like so so these are the three different lights we're going to be using and they're all fully customizable. I think the easiest one to go with for a lot of people is the point light as it obviously just gives a light around an area but obviously with the other lights you can get into a lot more detail with them. So I've got three different rooms so I'll use the different lights for each room. So let's start with the left room and let's start with point lights. So we'll go to lights, point light here and we're going to have this like so. Now if we just place this somewhere in the middle of this area you'll see we can now get this lighting up like so. If I move over a bit, we've got that perfect. Turns out with the default settings of this, it's going to look pretty good for the size of my room. Obviously it might have been too big or too small, so we might have had it like that where we've got these circles here, but if I had to reset it it's fine. Or if it's too close to one side, you'll notice it's really bright there, which we obviously don't want, and that's where you then probably want to use a different kind of light. But a point light here is perfectly fine. We can increase or decrease the intensity like so, but again for me, I think 8 is pretty good. And then we obviously change the colour as well, so if you wanted a nice warm kind of yellowy tint to it, obviously not that extreme, or a, cold, or a cold blue, or red, or green, whatever it is that you want, we can do that very easily. But for me, I'm just going to leave it as white. Now if we hold on left alt and drag, we can duplicate this to get another one into our scene. And we'll move that over to the other side, like so. Now if I press G, we're just going to hide those, and now we can see this is what the room is going to look like lit up. Now obviously you might prefer to have actual light static meshes in here and then put the lights in those meshes so it actually looks like the light is coming from somewhere in the world, but for me this is going to be fine, very basic and simple. And so let's go on to the next room now and do some point lights. So let's go to add, lights and spotlights, sorry not point lights, we want to do spotlights. We'll move this up like so. Now this one is going to be a little bit more tricky to get it to look right just because of the kind of light it is, but we'll still give it a good try. Again, this is obviously why you want to use different kind of lighting. So what I'm going to do is just increase the angle of the cone a little bit, so we have it like this, and you can do the inner cone as well, so it's a bit more bright in this area, like so. And then you can also increase the source radius, intensity, all this good stuff that we could do before as well. So I think I might just leave it as intensity of 8 once again. But you'll notice with this though, obviously, it's just a spotlight going down, which means it's not going to light above it like this one is. So these are just some things to keep in mind. However, what you can do is duplicate this to get another one and then point that up at the ceiling, but just obviously with a lower intensity. So let's say two. So the ceiling is now actually being lit up. So it looks like it's being lit up from that, but it's not actually the same light. It's a different one entirely. So if I were to hide this, we should see that obviously this is what it would look like without it. And this is what it's like with it. So it just gives that basic effect that we want there. And obviously you don't need to have that if you don't want, if you did want it to just be only pointing down but I think it looks better with not being pitch black above it like so. And then we'll do the same thing where we just duplicate these over into the rest of our level. Now the spotlights I'm going to have more than just two in here, 
I'm going to have a row of three instead, as I think that's going to work a little bit better for lighting up this area, as you can see here. So this is a little bit dimmer than this one, just because of the different kind of lights. But now you'll notice these have these, these little crosses on them. Now what this means is we have too many stationary lights near each other. So if we were to select these, what we can do is let's select all of our lights actually. So let's even get the lights in here because these are also getting the cross as well. Although we can't select all of them, sorry. So let's just select the point lights first. What we can do is instead of stationary, set them to static or set them to movable. Now see so you can hover over these and see what they fully do. So static light can't be changed in game. Stationary light will only have its shadows, shadowing and bounce lighting from static geometry baked, baked by light mass and movable lights can be moved and changed in game. So the efficiency goes down as you go along these, so static is the most efficient, then stationary is less, and movable is the least. But obviously movable looks the best. So that is why you might get that little X on the lights there. And that is a quick way to fix them, just change over their mobility. And the final room here, we're going to be using the rect lights. So let's go back up to add, lights, rect light here. Now this is similar to the spotlight again, but again, gives us a little bit more control over it. So let's move it up. I'm going to change the source width to let's say 100 and the source height to let's say 100 as well. Or actually, let's make it an actual rectangle. So let's say 500. So this would be good if you want a strip of light going along your room. So if maybe you have one of those industrial light sources or anything along those lines. Or if you actually, let's just say we want one light for the whole room like this. I think that would be pretty good. And let's also increase the width a little bit as well. Let's say 300. So this is going to cover the whole ceiling of the roof like so. Oh, not 100, sorry, on 1,000. Maybe even a little bit more. Let's go 1,200. I think that's going to be good. Although that's actually not in the middle, apparently. It needs to be there. Further over. So this is a little bit finicky. But again, you just mess about with the values to get them perfect for you. This is going to be fine for the purpose of this tutorial. Then we can change the angle of the barn door, which as you can see is this little bit here. So I want it to let's just be 80. I think that'll be good. And you can change the length of this as well. So how far out this is actually going to go as well. This is going to be perfectly fine for me. Then let's just increase the intensity a little bit. Or let's just say 10. And now we have this light here lighting up the room. And now again, we can do the same trick we did the spotlight. So duplicate this, flip it over to light up the ceiling a little bit as well and then also lower the intensity to about two. Now I've just remembered with these ones pointing up, what you're gonna to want to do is click on these and untick cast shadows. So that when the player walks over them, they're not going to be actually having a shadow from this because we obviously don't want an actual light source to be on the floor. We just want it to give the illusion of a light source there. So we're gonna untick cast shadows like so. And now we've got these three different rooms lit up using three different lighting methods and you'll obviously see which one you prefer the most and which method you were going to want to go with. But these are the three different main ones anyway. There's obviously many more ways, but this is some basic, easy ways to do this. And also, you'll notice here we have preview written on the wall. If you get that, all you need to do is just build your lighting. So we're going to, to build up here, lighting quality, I'll leave it as preview, and then we can build lighting only. And this should be very quick for me as I've not got a lot of lighting in here. But once we do get it built, the lighting will change how it looks, so it'll look a little bit better, and we will remove the preview off the walls here. But I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've just set up the lighting inside of our building so we can now actually see inside of here and it's going to look absolutely perfect for what we want. So we have different methods of doing this and again we can change the colour, intensity, source, angle, all this great stuff to just light up our interiors how and where we want. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.